Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it is RDF and in today's video we will be looking at Ralph Hasenhurtl's system for Southampton. We are going to try and recreate that in Football Manager 2021, hopefully we are successful. Now it is a 4-4-2, that's what I call it, but depending on who you talk to, some may call it a 4-2-2-2 or some may call it a 4-2-4. But no matter the formation, the tactical principles remain the same. So we are going to try and recreate that we are going to talk a little about Ralph Harsen Hurtle's style his style for Southampton was similar to the style that he used at previous clubs we are going to look at the results in Football Manager 2021 and hopefully you have enjoyed this video so if you are new or you haven't yet make sure you subscribe to my channel make sure you like this video and make sure you leave a comment if there's any tactics you want me to try and analyze and recreate in Football Manager 2021 make sure you leave that in the comments also make sure that your notifications are turned on so when I do upload a video you guys will get the notifications sent straight to yourself but if you also want a brief but top tactical analyst on Southampton's play then you should also head over to T4 Football where Alex Stewart did cover Ralph Harsen Hurtle's tactic for Southampton. I may just leave that link in the description. So now let's get started with the actual video. At the time of doing this video, which is the 24th of January 2021, Southampton are currently placed 11th in the Premier League. It felt like just yesterday when Southampton lost 9-0 to Leicester, that was actually in October 2019 and the Saints fans would hate me mentioning that result. But since then, they have every reason to be optimistic about the club's future, certainly under the current manager, Ralph Harsen Hurtle. This season, Southampton got off to a bad start losing their two opening games, but then that was followed by a seven-match unbeaten run in the Premier League, including a 3-3 draw away to Chelsea, a 2-0 victory over an impressive Everton side and a 4-3 victory away to Aston Villa who at that time were very defensively sound. The narrow attacking shape that Ralph Harsen Hurtle uses doesn't just work well for them in attack but it also helps them if they lose the ball in attacking areas because straight away they have numbers in central areas and that makes it difficult for the opponents to play through. Southampton are very well drilled under Ralph Harsen Hurtle and because of this it makes it difficult to pick a performer who sticks out. While Stanley Ings is likely to be identified as the key player by most, James Ward-Prowse is certainly equally as important. He's played the most progressive passes so far for the Saints. 83, played the most key passes 27 which would be ranked 17th in the Premier League and the most passes in the final third for Southampton 90 so it's clear the set piece specialist is the playmaker. Danny Ings has been impressive scoring 7 goals in 13 starts whilst managing to get 3 assists. It's also interesting to note that both fullbacks Ryan Bertrand and Carl Walker's Peter have both won 31 tackles each which is a lot. That places them both joint 7 in the Premier League with most tackles won. Bertrand has been excellent in the 1v1 situations. The 4-4-2 shape, on paper Southampton are shaped with a 4-4-2 but this very quickly transitions into a 4-2-2-2. As the two wingers tuck inside and act as inverted wingers, when this happens this allows both fullbacks, Kyle Walker's Peters more so than Bertrand, to make forward movements and this is how they stretch play. So with their narrow attacking shape, the fullbacks are actually very important players. Just like Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester United who are previously covered, Southampton very rarely send crosses into the box and are ranked 19th with crosses in the Premier League so far. When their wide players are in areas to send in a cross, they opt to play the ball either backwards as this can help up open space for them to work the ball into central areas or they would play the ball centrally if the option is there too. Southampton also don't switch the ball from side to side with a direct ball. If they work the ball from one side to another, it's usually done with short passes. They've only completed 173 switches, which again ranks them 19th in the league. Despite their intense approach, they can be patient with their build up and usually build up with a back three playing short passes to draw the opposition in. To get in behind the opponent's defence, they like to play through balls or passes into space to try and attack the space in the channels. Southampton have registered 21 through balls 
people so far and only the big seven have registered more. Well, the big seven if you swap Chelsea with Leeds United. Southampton are also a forward thinking team but when the opportunity is there to attack central areas directly. They like to play the ball forward rather than dribble the ball forward and mainly use their inverted wingers as the dribblers as they attempt to come inside with the ball. Musa De Naples has been Saints most effective dribbler so far, creating shot actions 8 times with his dribbles, that's the 6th best in the league. Southampton would much prefer to overload in the central areas and work the ball into the box. This is how they create most of their shot actions but it's worth noting that so far this season set pieces has been kind to them and thanks to James Woodprass, they have scored 5 times from dead ball situations. Despite the narrow shape, the fullbacks are used pretty often in build ups as Saints often use their wider areas to start their build ups. Kyle Walker-Peters so far has 1,288 touches of the ball which is the third most for Southampton. Bertrand has 1,136 touches and that ranks him fourth. Once the play has been built and Southampton advance up the pitch then Southampton players can be seen overloading the box and that makes defensives uncomfortable. Off the ball, many may identify Romeo as the size destructive player, the ball winner. Actually, he's currently ranked fourth with the most tackles made in the Southampton side and more surprisingly, James Woodprouse has won more tackles so far. Kyle Walker-Peters and Ryan Bertrand, who have made the most tackles for the Saints, 31 each, are currently the side's top tacklers. Walker-Peter put slightly more pressure on the opponents, therefore completed more interceptions than Bertrand, but Bertrand is a very good 1v1 defender and has been dribbled past less. Harson Hurtle's men like to press and are one of the best at it in the Premier League at the moment. Moment. They have successfully pressured the opponent 865 times and they often operate in a mid to high block to stop the opponents playing and most of Southampton's pressure so far have come in the middle third. 1202 times they have pressured the opponents in the mid third and Southampton so far have made the most tackles in the mid third in the Premier League. This isn't purely because of the mid block as the Saints have been very aggressive this season. They have tackled 138 dribblers which is the most but because of their aggressiveness they have have been dribbled past the second most in the league 241 times. Southampton are very good at reacting to loose balls too and this could be because of their narrow shape. Players are close to each other and this can be helping Southampton recover loose balls. They have recovered the ball 1956 times and that's the most equaling with Liverpool. Another reason why Southampton could be great at recovering the ball is because of the work that advanced players do. When the opponents are trying to build, Southampton can be seen setting pressing triggers to try and force the opponents to play loose or long passes for the defenders to recover possession and this is how they often pressure and recover. One last thing about Southampton when out of possession is their fouling. Some may not be a fan of this but Southampton can be seen giving away cheap fouls as a tactic to stop the opponents from playing. They have given away 227 fouls which is a higher number compared to others in the league. In a nutshell, I'm a huge fan of Harson Hurtle and the way he's got his Southampton side currently playing. It's demanding and Southampton haven't got the biggest squad. Both Kyle Walker-Peters and Ryan Bertrand were missing in the 3-1 defeat at home to Arsenal and it showed why these two players are absolutely key in their positions. For me, these are positions that need to be covered with decent quality. That is no disrespect to Jan Valery or Jake Vulkins who did as well as they could in the match against Arsenal. So that is enough of me talking about the Haas and Hurtle way. So we are now going to look into Football Manager 2021 to basically check the results and also look at my recreation. So here we go. And as you can see, we are lined up with a 4-4-2, but don't be alarmed. This will very quickly transition into a more 4-2-2-2 and more of a box shape in midfield. So in goal, we have the sweeper keeper on the support duty. Left back, which would be Ryan Bertrand, we have the full back on support. He has run wide with the ball, get further forward, so when we are building, and if the central midfielder decides to drop, then Bertrand will get further forward. He's also going to stay wider, tackle harder, and mark tighter. For the right back, he is under attack duty, Cal Walker Peters, who is going to be a little more advanced than Ryan Bertrand. His instruction is to stay wider, tackle harder, and mark tighter. For the central back partnership, we have two central defenders who are under defend duty, but the left central defender has to take more risks to try and play the more advanced forward to try and break the lines in our build up. On the left flank we have the inverted winger on the attack duty he is going to be sitting narrower. Now this is where Musa Ginepo could play and like I said earlier this is the player that 
dribbles a lot he's currently ranked seventh with creating shot actions with his dribbles so i decided to give him the attack duty to try and make him dribble more be more aggressive with the ball try and create those shot actions on the right flank we have the inverted winger under support duty more the Stuart armstrong really getting further forward sitting narrower and just supporting the team especially in the midfield the midfield partnership consists with a central midfielder on the defend duty which would be Romeo, and his instruction is to tackle harder be more aggressive in his tackles and his partner would be the deep line playmaker james wood prowse of course dictating things for this southampton side lastly up top we have a pressing forward who is going to be moving into the channels now this could be shea adams or this could be danny ings i in this football manager test use shea adams for this job he's decent at holding up the ball closing down more as a pressing forward and tackling harder and lastly we got the danny ings role the advanced forward someone that is going to be looking to get into those channels get further forward be the more advanced striker now in real life maybe actually both strikers operate in the deeper areas too there is a zone called zone 14 that is basically just outside the opponent's penalty box and you will see that southampton also do overload in this area but on football manager we do need one striker who is going to be penetrating that space constantly which is why i went with the advanced forward rather than a deep line forward on the attack duty or a complete forward on the attack duty now for the team instructions the mentality we are on positive the attacking width is on very narrow now this is something that i'm not really a huge fan of because we do want to play narrow football we do want that shape as a box midfield but when doing this they didn't really use the fullbacks to build up now when in transition i could distribute it to the fullbacks which is something that i should have done which is something that you could do once you've received this tactic but in approach play we are going to be passing into space we are going to be focusing our attack through the middle this is how we are going to overload in the central area especially in the box and we are going to be playing out from the defense passing directness is set to standard so it's going to go with the positive mentality they have the ability to play the ball short but they also have the ability to play a more direct ball to split the defense lines and the tempo we have gone with a slightly higher but this can change if you notice we have three slots all the tactics are the same with little tweaks and we use them in different situations so so my first one in the first slot would be the main tactic this is what i use mainly this is what i use to start off in most of my matches home and away the second one is one with extremely high tempo this can be used to break down those very defensive sides i noticed whenever i played teams in a relegation zone it was easy for them to defend narrow and then our narrow attacking play wasn't really effective so i pushed the tempo to extremely wide and things started to change we started to open up space a little bit better and lastly when we are playing the big sides away liverpool manchester city arsenal chelsea those type of teams again we have increased the tempo we've also increased the time wasting a little just sometimes and in transition we are going to be regrouping just basically getting back to our 442 shape making it more difficult for the opponents to break through but in the final third we are also going to be working the ball into the boxes trying to not send those crosses in because southampton don't send in crosses if they do send in a cross we want it to be a low cross in transition when the possession has been lost we are going to be counter pressing and when the possession has been won we are then going to be making our counter movements in possession when the goalkeeper is distributing it he's going to be taking short kicks i should have distributed it to the full backs i'm not exactly sure what my thinking was distributing it to the center backs but it should be on distribute to the full backs out of possession we are defending with a higher line of engagement with a standard defense line this can create sort of a mid block defensive width we are going to be forcing the opposition out wide for the market and tackling we are using tighter marking extremely urgent present intensity and prevent the short goalkeeper distribution so that is my ralph harson hurtles tactic we are now going to check the results in the league we did manage to finish fourth we played 38 winning 22 of those games drawing 11 and losing five all of those five losses came away from home most of our draws were away matches also if we go to the league table and we check our home record actually we did have the second best home record in the league it was our away record that let us down slightly we finished fourth but i wouldn't say let us down because that sounds way too harsh considering we were predicted to finish nowhere near the top four the standout performance danny ings he managed to score 18 goals jane wood prowse managed to get 18 assists romeo got 11 yellow cards fraser forster got the most clean sheets in the league you will be surprised i started fraser forster over alice mccarthy checking fraser forster's attributes and his profile you can see why i did that so the average possession we managed to finish eighth which is 
one of the better teams in the league. We were the fourth best top goal scorers in the league, with the fourth best expected goals for in the league also. When it comes to clear cut chances created, we managed to finish second, so very well done to Southampton this season. Passes completed, we finished eighth in the ranking table. Conversion rate though, which I am most impressed with, we managed to win that. We managed to finish first. I don't think I've ever finished first with the conversion rate, so well done me too. Conceding our defensive record, we had the third best defence in the league, but we also had the most clean sheets in the league. Defending from corners was horrible for us, we managed to concede 6 from corners, so that is something that we should be looking at. But when it comes to possession 1, we won, we won possession the 5th most in the league. And another rewarding statistic we can see here, Southampton finished third with interceptions. So, in, so it's nice to know that our pressing game worked very well and it works similar to how it works in real life. So for the player stats, like I said, Danny Ings was the second top goal scorer in the league, but you can see Nathan Redmond managed to grab 12 goals in the league. Danny Ings did finish the season with the most expected goals for also. Just to show you how James Ward-Prowse is important to this system, you can see for the key passes, James Ward-Prowse finished third. He's also got the most assists, but he also did create the most clear-cut chances in the Premier League. So he is effectively the biggest creator in the Premier League in this test. And finally, for the player statistics, you can see Ryan Bertrand finished fifth with most tackles won. So again, another pleasing result. You want to at least achieve similar results to what the team are achieving in real life. So we are going to look at the team report for the attacking efficiency. We're literally bang in the middle when it comes to aggressive and passiveness but we were very clinical on our breaks. For our defensive efficiency, again, nearly in the middle between busy and quiet, but nonetheless, we were impenetrable. Now for goals, the type of goals that we are scoring, 46 of them were placed shots, only 10 were headers, 4 powerful shots, 4 lobs, 2 free kicks and 4 penalties. For the assist, 22 were from through balls but 22 were also from crosses. Now I'm not sure how football manager ranks crosses because a lot of pullbacks, football manager also ranks them as crosses. In real life, I'm not sure a pullback is ranked as a cross. So nonetheless, we did score 22 goals from crosses. So now we are going to look at the squad statistics. Danny Ings was a top goal scorer with 18 goals in all competitions. Nathan Redmond with 12 goals in all competitions. Shea Adams only managing to get 8 goals. Shane Long did manage to get 6 goals in 10 starts with James Ward-Prowse getting 3 goals in 34 starts. For the assists, James Ward-Prowse with the most assists. Danny Ings again with 8 assists so you can see how important James Ward-Prowse and Danny Ings are to the Southampton side. Kyle Walker-Peters managed to get 7 assists as the right back. Again, another important player and another important player. I'm sorry to mention all these important players but Ryan Bertrand, he also got 5 assists. Now to actually confirm the most important players, we have James Ward-Prowse with the highest rated player. Fraser Forster's second most, the reason why I'm skipping these two, they didn't play at least five games. Nathan Redmond comes in third, we have Danny Ings coming in fifth and Kyle Walker-Peters coming in sixth. Those are ranked as the average rating. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed recording it for you guys. I hope you guys use this tactic. If you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. If you have any recommendations for which tactic I should do next, again, leave that in the comment. It has been RDF. It has been a pleasure. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, leave a comment, leave a like. It helps out a lot. So I will see you soon. Stay safe. Peace out.